to Inspire, the show that tells you the story of how they did it so that you can do it too. And our guest today is IBF bantamweight world champion, Lee Haskins. In boxing, discipline is one of the, one of the major things. You don't just have to be a great boxer, you have to be you know, a great, a great uh, swimmer, a great runner. It's so many different sports, mixed into one just to be a great athlete. I was in detention with my with my tutor. He said, well, you never come to school, you do this, you do this, you come in, you get detention. He said, what do you want to be? I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a world champion boxer. He said, that's just a dream. You, you can't become a world champion boxer. Lee, thank you for joining us on Inspire today. I guess the reason why we wanted to talk to you was because of the journey that you've had so far and how many fights that you've had and obviously the world title that yeah, you sure. currently have the belt on your lap heavy as hell yeah <laughs> it is heavy, but like you said about the same weight as me yeah, yeah uh, but you know amazing achievements so far it is yeah how does it feel at the moment to be <clears throat> world champion you know it's um it's, it's crazy to have a dream at such a, a young age and then actually fulfill it you know um for me to become world champion was it, it, I got to the I got to a part of my career where I never thought I was going to win it. So when I won it, you know, it was aesthetic and I've got it now. I've defended it once, and um, it's an amazing feeling. Do you think that when you won, you won because you were ready to win? Yeah, that's 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 right. I think um, you know uh, later on, uh, earlier on in my career, things didn't go, go too well for me. Down to myself, down to my training, and I think if I would have fought for a world title back then, I would have definitely have not have, have won it. And you've had quite a lot of fights, so is it 36 fights you've yeah, had? Yeah, 36 professional fights. And three losses. And three losses. That's not that many losses, or do those losses still <coughs> count? Do they hurt quite yeah, a lot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They haunt me. For, you know, sometimes when I go to bed, I always think about, it. I think about them losses. And I, it, the worst thing about it, it was, it was fights that I could have won. And um, you know, I failed myself, like I said, in training. So um, that's going to haunt me for the rest of my career because I'm never going to get them back. So what do you think you did wrong? when you lost those fights so what was Lee doing you know I think it was just I don't want to say it was, it was wrong but I was, I was I was young I wanted to enjoy my life a little bit with my friends I think it a title fights all came kind of early for me and I was I was going out with my friends partying a bit too much not really dedicating myself to the cause um you know I should have been in, in training flat out but yeah I never and um I paid for it I guess in reality, you were just doing what every young person wants to do. But I guess if you want to be a world champion boxer, mm -hmm. then there's so much discipline, which so many people don't get to see. What is the discipline like That's right. when I you're coming up to a fight? In, in, in boxing, discipline is one of, the, one of the major things. You know, to be, to be a great fighter, you don't just have to be a great boxer. You have to be you know, a great, a great uh, swimmer, a great runner, a great weightlifter, you know, it's so many different sports mixed into one just to be a great athlete. Um, and uh, for myself, I was, uh, I abandoned a lot of that, you know, just because I wasn't dedicated enough. So, you know, like I said, I paid for it in the end. But obviously today. Oh yeah, well, well now. You are here. I'm world champion. World champion. Uh, in fact, for <coughs> Bristol, obviously, Bristol hasn't seen a world champion for 15 years since mm -hmm. Glenn Catley. So a remarkable achievement. And you get to always keep that belt as a keepsake, don't you? That's right. Yeah, this is going to be in, in, in my family for, uh, you know, generations. I think, yeah. now, you know, I want to pass it down to my kids, them to their kids. And it's something that I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of to be able to leave behind for them. And you couldn't do it without your family. That's a big yeah. part of you, isn't it? I know that you're a big family man anyway. Yeah, 100%, 100%. I'm dedicated to my kids. Um, when I was young, I was partying a lot, but you know, I had my first son, Anton. It made me uh, get my head screwed on and yeah. you know, go to How work. old were you when you had your first son? I was only, uh, I think I was 18, I think, when um, we, wow. we had him. And um, you know, as soon as I seen him, I knew I had to get to work. And I knew I, knew I had the potential to be a great fighter because I was always told, from a young age, I could, be, I could be a great boxer when, as soon as I, when I was amateur. You know, so as soon as I had him, I had to put the work in. And then, uh, you know, I had my second and my third. And, you know, I feel right now I definitely got to put my head together because yeah. they're going to cost me a hell of a lot of money. So Well, you've got three kids waiting <laughs> on you, right. I guess. <laughs> right, <yeah. laughs> you've got to make sure. You've got to bring in the Benjamins. That's right. Um, I guess as a boxer as well, when you're first starting out, the money isn't actually coming in that much. So how did you survive in, in your early days? Um, you know, to be fair, I had a lot of... Um, I had a lot of support from my family, 
even my manager Chris helped me out when I, when I was young because boxing is, 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 a, is a tough game. There's, there's, there's no money in it in the beginning unless you're fighting for titles and obviously you don't fight for titles until you make your way to the top. Um, so I was, you know, I was working plus coming in to the gym, not getting to see my family as much because I had to work, I had to put the food on the table. Um, you know, and uh, my, my, my wife had to work as well. So that was how, you know, we stuck together and just, we, we, we come up with a plan and we just worked it. You definitely couldn't have done it without them, could you? No, 110% I couldn't have. And like I said, if I never even had them, I don't think I would be here I'd, uh, as a boxer. I think I'd yeah. be doing something, you know. What would you be doing? So what would Lee Haskins be doing if, if you weren't a boxer? What was, what was say, your, your, your second choice? I never, you know, I never had a plan. I never had no second plan. That was the thing with me. I never, I never finished school, which was a shame. Um, you know, so there was really no plans with me. Yeah. Um, so I couldn't say what I would have been doing. Hopefully, it would just, it would have been something, you know, good and and maybe helping people. Yeah. Uh, in school, you you mentioned school that you didn't finish school. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> how was school for you then? I guess you you weren't a fan of it. Yeah. No, I I, I enjoyed school when. You know, being a little, I was a little bit of a menace in school with my friends and yeah. stuff, so I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the mess in the pipe bar, but I just didn't, you know, um, sit down and The course. homework. Yeah, the homework, <laughs> yeah. The, any of the schoolwork I didn't really enjoy, you know, which I yeah. should have. I should have, you know, got my head down and even though I, even though I was going to get into boxing, I still should have had a, a game plan, you know, a, a backup plan, a, a college after school and stuff like that. But, you know, I never, um, you know, so I, I had to put the, everything I knew into boxing and, and that's what I did. And, and I've, yeah. I've come out the other side. Uh, so when was that, that moment when you thought, I could be a boxer? Yeah, well, do you know what? It's, um, it's crazy because I was, I was telling my friends, we always, you, I, I remember this like it was just a couple of days ago. Uh, we, we always used to speak and we used to speak about what we want to be. And um, they would ask me and I would say, I want to be a boxer. And they would say, well, that's, just, that's not really going to happen, is it? So well, you must have got to figure something else. And I think some of them were saying they want to be like a jet pilot. And I was thinking, well, that's just as hard as to, uh, yeah. it's not harder than, than being, a, uh, being a fire. But, um, you know, and I had the same problem. I remember this as well. It was, I was in a school and I was in detention with my, with my tutor. His name was Mr. Lees. And um, he said, well, you never come to school. You do this, you do this, you come in, you get detentions. He said, what do you want to be? I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a world champion boxer. He said, that's just a dream. You, you can't become a world champion boxer. And yeah. I said, well, that's what I want to be. And I remember it, and I swear this on my kids. And um, we left it as that. And it's crazy. I've become exactly what I've said. I've told my friends, I've told my family, I've told my mum at an early age. And um, exactly everything I predicted has come true. But that is because you believed it, didn't you? 100%, yeah, because I believed it in my own head. And I didn't, let nobody, I didn't let nobody tell me that I couldn't do it. If I wanted to do it, I was doing it, and I did it. You were, uh, shall we say, a cheeky kid, weren't you? Yeah, well, I can you, say you this know, you um, know. because for those of you that don't know at home, uh, me and Lee actually grew up on the same street. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember the first time I saw you uh, when you guys moved into the street and you were about this high. So you've grown an inch since <laughs> then. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, and, 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 and you were you were dancing across the road, and uh, Lee's favourite song was "All oh, My Love, All oh, My Kissing." You don't know what you've been missing, oh boy. And you used to do the air guitar. Was, and you know I, was, I knew you were going to bring it up. I knew it. I knew it. I was thinking it this morning. I knew you were going to bring it up. <laughs> because every time I think of you, I always think of you. Obviously, you are, you know, world champion boxer. But to me, I guess I'm always going to think of little Lee <laughs> on our street that was always singing and dancing. Yeah, yeah. Um, when we used to go up on the bank. Yeah, on yeah, the bank. Yeah, I used yeah. to love those days. They were great days. They were. What would you say to people that want to be world champion boxers? I mean, it's not the easiest task to <laughs> obviously complete. You've done it, but yeah. how did you do it then? What do you think are the things that, that you did right? that you could advise you know, younger people I, that want to do it? I think just, just believing in yourself and having the right people around you, like I have my, my, my kids, my wife, my mum, my nan, my, my, my family, you know, and um, you need the right people around you that's going to support whatever you do. If you tell them you want to do something, they, they, they've got to be like, yeah, they can help you or they can push you towards that goal. If you ain't got the right, if you hang around with the wrong people, you, you're just going to find life really hard, you know. If, you, yeah. if, you, if you're with the wrong group of people, you're going to find life hard. If you've got the right people around you, you know, and they actually care about you, they're going to show you the right way. 
I guess some people might think that if you want to be a boxer, you can mm -hmm. hang around with the wrong types of people yeah. because you like a bit of fighting, to and and fro in. Yeah. But actually, you're saying the complete opposite, no, uh, opposite where you yeah. need that calm, don't you, at yeah, home? Yeah, you need that calm at home. You need to be able to relax. And like, boxing is the most disciplined place you can ever be. You know, so when you're down there with the with the trainers, they'll really put it on you, and they they won't let you. You know, if you want, if you want to argument outside this ring, you you won't be doing that in this gym. If you want to, if you want to spar, you get in this in the gym and do it. But Apart from that, any trouble outside, they find out any you got into any trouble outside the gym or anything, then you're banned. You know they're they're real strict on that. And, you know we don't teach people here to box so you can go out on the streets and yeah. use it. You know because that's just a fool's way. If you think you're tough out in the streets and you want to be a, a fighter, then bring it to the gym. Earn some and, money. Yeah, and earn some money for it. Why not yeah. fight and get paid for it? You know? The first fight was the scariest thing I ever did in my life, and I'm just looking around thinking, you know what? I just need to get out of here. I don't want to be boxing. I don't want to box. <laughs> <laughs> and then they had uh, Chris right. He said, "No, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Just take it easy." And yeah, I said, "Listen, I don't want to fight. I've, I've fought by this. I don't want to be a boxer anymore." Do you remember your your first professional fight? Uh, I want to know how you prepped for it and, and what did it feel like when you climbed up and ducked your head underneath the ropes? The ropes. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? The first fight was the scariest thing I ever did in my life. Um, in my first professional fight that was as well. I trained hard for it and I was walking, I was in the changing rooms, it was about an hour before we had to go out. And I'm just looking around thinking, you know what, I just need to get out of here. I don't want to be boxing. I don't want to box. <laughs> and then they had uh, Chris around. He said, no, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Just take it easy. And yeah, I said, listen, I don't want to fight. I've, I've fought by this. I don't want to be a boxer anymore. Really? Yeah. You got just, that bad? I guess that was it. Was it the nerves? Yeah, it was the nerves. Yeah, it was the, it was the scariest thing ever. But, um, you know, I, I just plucked up the courage. Uh, I went out there and um, I think I, was, I, was, I knocked him out in the, in the first round, round two right. or something like that. Yeah. So um, yeah, it, and then from that day I had that buzz of winning, it was just constant and every fight I just couldn't wait to get there. In the run up to a fight, what's it like? It's painful, it's um, tiring, um, it's, it's, a, it's a big roller coaster, you know, you're up and downs in, in, in a training camp where you just can't feel it, where you physically can't do anymore. So you need your rest and you're bad, you're happy, you're not happy. It's just sometimes my, my, my wife gets the blunt of it, you know, I'm all grumpy in the house and stuff, especially with the diet. Um, but it's just one of the things, it's, 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 a, it's a tough game we're in, but massive rewards. So that's why we do it. Um, if ever you needed inspiration, mm -hmm. I mean, it's quite inspirational just being in here, isn't it? With yeah, all the right, posters yeah. and all the great fighters mm -hmm. that we have. Um, who's your favourite fighter, which is up on, um, up on the wall? Probably that one, Lee Haskins. Um, Lee Haskins? Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to do that, you? No, um, you know, we look at all the great fighters and there's a lot of great <coughs> fighters that, you know, we, um, we want to be like, um, you yeah. know, we just, we, it's not like I want to be like um, any, any of these fighters. I just want to be the best I can be yeah. and um, I want to be the same as them, uh, like a legend, a world champion, someone that you know, young kids can look up to and, and want to be like like myself with them when I was young. Yeah, yeah. And who, who are <coughs> the people that you look up to then? Who, when you were younger, before you were mm -hmm. kind of world champion and everything and you were kind of like on your journey, yeah. who were the boxers that you would look up to and who do you look up to today? You know, I, I, I liked a lot of like Prince Nassim, Toro Gatti, um, great fighters, Mike Tyson. Yeah. You know his attitude to the whole game was kind of it was kind of fun to watch. Yeah. Um, all the fighters that were just kind of shining bright, I, I kind of I liked. You know. Yeah, they were quite entertaining to watch, yeah. especially Prince Nazim. Yeah, you know, he was, the, he was the, he, I think he was one of the best entertainers of all time. I think in the yeah. boxing game. And you are a role model today, as you say. How do you feel about that responsibility? Yeah, you know, I, t I, t I, t I take it. You know, I take it well. Um, you know, I. I I don't want to disappoint anybody, so I'm not the kind of guy to do, uh, do anything stupid. Like, you know, you see a lot of, you know, um, say I'm not myself, but I've, there's like celebrities, you know, that I like to do. I, I, I try and keep myself grounded. Yeah. You know, I want to be a, a main role model, first of all, to my kids. I've got to lead them and show them the right way. And then after them is all the other kids. I want them to see that how I've done things and, and, and my whole story, the, the journey that I've been through in my boxing career 
it's quite a good one, you know, so kids can really tune into it because I'm from the same area as them, brought up just like them, and um, I'm doing things, you know, I've done things exactly the same as them when I was young, so if I can do it, anybody can do it. That's such a good way to look at it. Yeah. And you are definitely an inspiration. You are someone that people can mm -hmm. look up to. I know that your son, yeah. your eldest, yeah. he does a bit of boxing as well, doesn't he? He does, yeah. You know, he's 16 years old now. It makes me... S I like can't believe you've got a 16-year-old son. <laughs> it's crazy. And, um, you know, he, he comes... Because he's, he's just finished school now as well, so he trains with me every day in the day. He helps me out. We do stuff together. We've been doing it since he was a little baby. You know, I bring him to the gym with me. He, uh, he follows in everything I do. You know, he has friends, but you know, he doesn't like to quiet. He keeps himself grounded. So I said, like, why don't you quiet, you know? He was now dad, I just, I used to be in the pure or he's, like, or he's training with me. That's all he does. He just loves to train, which he, is such an, a pleasure to watch him. You know, he's exactly the same as myself and he's quite grounded. But that's it? no surprise because obviously you have set that example. So yeah. he would rather do what you're doing because, mm -hmm. you know, and I a lot of kids, they do look up to their dads. They're, 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 they're mum and dads as well, yeah, especially yeah. if they see yeah. them doing the right thing and good things. You know, they, 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 they follow that and that's the first person they, yeah. they see doing well is their mum and dad and, and then they want to be like, you know, and that's, I think sometimes yeah. that's what uh, kids need. They need to see their, 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 their dad or their mum doing well by example kind of thing. And you took the whole family with you to <coughs> Vegas. To Vegas, yeah. Uh, let's talk a bit about Vegas because I remember thinking, wow, Lee is fighting in Vegas. That is completely amazing. You get there, you get into your camp, you're doing all your bits yeah. and pieces, doing what you need to do, and then the fight does not happen. happen. Yeah, devastating. How did you feel? I mean, it was like um, you know, just it was like something was just took away from me. You know, like um, it was going to be the, every fighter wants to fight in Vegas, and that was my dream, and it was just like swooped away from me. You know, it was it was, it was sad, but. You know, I said, I said, still had an amazing time over there. Like I said, we went with the family. We had the training camp in, in a Mexican boxing gym over there, which was, it was great. Um, you know, but he's, shame to say, he swallowed it, I believe, and mm. he didn't want to fight, and that was just that. So what do you do then? How do you recover after a massive blow like that? Because although well, you had to be given the fight, that's yeah. not how you want to no, win a fight, No, of course not. It? No, that's not 100%, you know, what the fight, we put in a hell of a lot of training for that fight and um, we just wanted to prove to the world that, you know, I'm world class and, you know, mm -hmm. and, that's, and that's what we wanted to do that night. But the job for us was to go over there and come back with this world title and we did that either way, you know. Um, shame, we, shame we didn't get the fight, but we defended it not long ago and I showed people, you know, the... That you're meant to have it. That I've meant to have it, yeah. You know, I've been around a long time winning major titles Nobody wanted to give me any chances, no, and I've won the, I won the British, Commonwealth, European, the main titles to win before you fight for a world title. Nobody would still give me the chance. I'm an awkward fighter, I'm a dangerous fighter, so they didn't want to they didn't want to risk anything. So yeah. I went all the way back and I fought for the British, Commonwealth and European again. I've done it two times, which no other boxer has really done, I don't think. So I've had to do everything twice when most people do it once, and then I've become world champion. That shows just how strong you are, though. Yeah, mentally, just to keep pushing. Yeah. You know? And I did that, and um, I'm, happy, I'm happy now. And the style that you have is, it is quite unique, I guess. Yeah, it's different. In the ring, it it's is kind different. Of different. So you, you think know? that kind of held you back a little bit, it, even though you were you, you winning fights? Yeah, that's right. I was, I was still winning. I think that was one of the, the, the points when I started losing a couple of times because they wouldn't give me the chances that I deserved. And, you know, I was getting frustrated, so I was going out a bit with my friends, not putting, you know, no one wanted to give me a chance, so I was kind of rebelling against the sport. Um, and, uh, you know, like I said, I picked myself up, want myself down. Mm. and uh, go back to work and I want it. What kept you going then in those moments when you were thinking, do you know what, I'm not going <coughs> to ever be given a chance. I've yeah. been knocked back about three or four times. You know, some people might think, sorry, I'm going to walk away. What made you think, actually, do you know what? No, this is mine. I'm going to have it. Yeah, well, you know, like I said, it was, it, was, it was a dream of mine to become world champion. So mm. I had to prevail it. Um, another thing is my kids, cost me a lot of money man and uh, <laughs> yeah. they want a lot of stuff so I had to get this belt you know yeah. I had to, Daddy had to get, get, to, get to the top and then um, so I can provide them with everything they want and mm. people call them sport but you know I just give them I, I love to give my kids what they want yeah yeah no, that's good well they're working yeah, hard for yeah, it you're doing everything right, yeah. you need to you're raising them properly that's right yeah what do you dream of today <clears throat> like does Lee Haskins still dream obviously this yeah, of is course, yeah. one of your main dreams mm -hmm. world champion yep um, but what do you want to do in the future? What could you see yourself doing in five years' time? How long are you going to keep boxing for? Well, you know, I want to go on tour, maybe 35. 
I want to try and unify the titles, get the major titles, WBC and the WBA, all three titles at the weight division. That'd be it. That's another dream of mine. And another dream for myself, not because I want to be better than anybody or, or anything like that, just so I give myself tasks and I keep working for it. I want to, be, I want to become one of the best athletes to ever come out of Bristol for myself. Just, um, you know, a, a, another dream for me, something for me to work, keep working hard towards. So that'd be, that's another dream of mine. And how about your own gym one day then? Yeah, straight away. Um, uh, 100% like I'm, I'm always going to be in the boxing game for the rest of my life. As soon as I finish my career, I want to help kids come through, see if I can train some champions myself, bring a few world champions um, to Bristol again, um, have my own gym, just be in the sport forever, you know? I mean, well, you proved that you can have a long lasting career in it because you've been doing it for, for a long, long time, long time yeah. haven't you? Yeah, and there was like points where I didn't think I was ever going to get the shot. Yeah. But, you know, you people said that and I just still kept fighting and fighting and it came. Well, Lee, thank you so much for talking to us today. A really inspirational story. And I think there's still some great things to come from you in the future, mate. Definitely. Thank you very much. Top man.